So you've come to learn about Cozy Gaming. You have come to the right place. I will tell you everything you need to know about Cozy Gaming, the gaming world in general, so that you can get started on your gaming journey. Welcome cozy friends, new and old, because I know some of you watching are experts already and you're just watching to support me and I see you and I love you. But for everyone else, if it's your initial steps into cozy gaming and to gaming in general, I'm here to give you all the details you need to know, the questions that might pop up, and even some little tips that I kind of wish I knew when I started gaming on the consoles that I'm gaming on now. And let's get into it, friends. First and foremost, consoles. Which console should you get? What are the differences between the different switches? There's so many, why are there so many? I asked myself the same questions. If you are a beginner to gaming or cozy gaming, I always get asked, what is the best console to start with? Personally, I think it is the Nintendo Switch. So Nintendo has three different kinds of Switches right now. They have the regular Switch, kind of regular regular, the first one they came out with. It'll run you $29.99 and that is, ooh, jump scare, okay? But it is worth it. It's definitely something to save up for or ask for, for like a birthday or Christmas or something like that from your friends and family. I'm gonna move through the rest of the switches and then I'm gonna give my opinion on kind of the difference between the three. So the next one is the OLED switch. And this is just kind of Nintendo's idea of improving on the original switch. Now the OLED will run you $349.99. I've heard that it's worth it. It's an improved screen, it's OLED, it's a bigger screen. I've heard the hardware is a little heftier, a little more solid. I think battery life is about the same, but it's kind of just a slight improvement. And for $50, it might be something to consider. And then the next is the Switch Lite. So the Switch Lite is kind of their take on the more portable, handy, maybe a Switch that's better for like kids, something like that. So this one is $199. $99.99. I think the huge dip in price makes sense given the fact that there's no removable Joy-Cons and it's not dockable. So this is purely a portable console system. I think the Switch is the best first console because it's extremely user-friendly. The UI of it, so user-friendly, so easy to get, you kind of know what to expect. Another thing that I think makes this a great console is the games themselves. The games that are available on Switch, I would say like 50% of them, rough estimate, are just very wholesome games. Like when you're browsing the eShop, most of the games you come across are gonna be kind of wholesome, kind of straightforward. The Nintendo IP alone is so wholesome. And all are great starter games for somebody who's just getting into gaming for the first time. Now, out of the three Switches, I'm gonna lump OLED and regular Switch together. I'm lumping those together in comparison. Which do I think is the best? It really depends on who you are as a gamer and how you think you'll be using the console. If you never care to play a Switch on the big screen. If you are solely kind of a bed gamer, a sofa gamer, where you just wanna hold it and play in your own little world, really there's really no reason besides kind of a bigger screen for you to get the regular Switch over the Switch Lite. The Switch Lite is so portable. It's like night and day holding the Switch Lite versus the regular Switch. It's so light and easy to hold. And I started on the Switch Lite and I never thought, oh, I feel like I'm missing something here. Like I think I, I need a bigger screen. I never thought that it felt perfect perfect for me when I started on the Switch Lite. It's also perfect for travel and like throwing in your bag to whip out. It's kind of not as <laughs> huge and clunky as the regular one. It's a little bit more inconspicuous if you kind of just want to like stealthily play at some point. However, if you want to play the Switch on a big screen ever, 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 at any point, any point. Like think about if you have a TV in your room and you want to be on your bed, but you want to see it kind of in a big screen and laying on your bed. If you want to play it on the couch with a big screen. If you even think that once you're going to want to do that, I think you should get the regular Switch. In addition, if you ever want to play multiplayer, if you ever want to play with friends, with family, getting the regular Switch is essential because it docks, you can connect a bunch of different remotes, play it on the big screen with your friends. That is just a completely different experience. All of those factors, I think, go into your decision. If I was starting over and I didn't have any switches, I would go for the OLED switch because I do play with other people, do dock it all the time. I record gameplay and you have to be able to dock your switch to be able to record gameplay. And the bigger, bigger screen that the OLED has looks really, really nice. However, I might just add on another switch light just for travel purposes, but that's just me being extra. Okay, other available consoles are Xbox and PlayStation. So these are just simply other console options. I think 
these are really similar. I kind of put them in the same bucket. They do have certain game exclusives on both of them. So if you do get a PlayStation, you might not be able to get all of the Xbox games and vice versa. However, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of overlap. And I would say the same way that Nintendo is like 50% wholesome, I would say Xbox and PlayStation are like 70 to 80% not wholesome. And that's cool. You know, they know their audience and they stick to that. They're both amazing consoles. I'm not going to go super in depth into them because I don't personally own any and I have before so I've been able to get get a feel for them but I don't personally find that I need it in addition to my switch and my PC so that brings me into PC so PC gaming is basically the mecca of gaming I think basically like every gaming title is on PC except for console exclusives like obviously Nintendo games aren't on there, whatever, whatever. So I think having both a Switch and a PC is the perfect combination. I feel like it covers all of the ground that you need when trying to test out gaming. And a PC is a great entry point if you don't know if you wanna get into gaming yet, therefore you don't wanna kind of splurge or invest on a console, but you wanna test it out. Because I think if you're watching this, most likely have access to a PC somewhere. And often you can find cheap PC games or even free PC games. The apps that I mainly use for downloading games, number one, Steam. Steam has like everything. Steam has literally everything you could ever want. And by the way, these are like computer programs that you download from the site. So you type in like steam.com, you download it. Once you open it, it's basically like a storefront slash library to buy games and to hold games. So number one is Steam. And then in no particular order after that, EA games and I think Epic games are the other two main ones that I have. I love that Steam has a curator feature. So you can follow a page that curates games. And so obviously as a cozy gamer one of the curators that I follow is wholesome games basically any wholesome cozy game that comes out onto steam comes out into the market wholesome games puts it on their list so if you follow wholesome games like you don't even have to really browse steam shop and try and parse through things and find cozy games you can just go to wholesome games this page and see oh this is coming out this is coming out i'm gonna add this to my wish list and steam is also available for mac and linux so you can browse the same curators and things like that to find games that are available for you based on the computer you already have so you don't even have to buy a new console see what works for you see if you like it if you hate gaming no harm no foul delete steam you never have to play any game again <laughs> but if you love it then you know maybe it's time to invest in a console amongst pcs there's kind of your regular regular pc right or your regular regular laptop i think there is definitely value if you figure out that you really love gaming and you really want to run kind of high high intensity games that take a lot of power to run and and look pretty <laughs> i definitely think it's worth it to save up and invest in building your own computer. There are pre-builds you can get. So there's a lot of websites. I got my first pre-built custom PC from CyberPower PC. I didn't know a lot about it, but they made it really easy to kind of go through and be like, okay, I need this, this, and this, and this is going to work together or it's not or whatever. Custom pre-built makes it so that you're kind of paying more for the labor of them putting everything together. And that was worth it for me at the start. If that's not worth it to you, you can absolutely build your own PC. Why do I know that? Because I built my own PC and I literally never thought that's something I could do. I never thought in a million years I would be able to build my own PC. And I did. I have a video on my channel if you want to see. So building your own PC cuts the cost a ton because you're doing the labor and it's not that much labor. I promise you. It's very doable. PCPartPicker.com is a great place to look to add all the parts you think you might want. And I think YouTube is a great resource to kind of figure out what parts you might need. There's a ton of videos that are like my first PC build and they kind of talk about why they picked the specs they have and then they give their own PC part picker list. And then you can just go and copy that exact build and maybe customize a few things. Anyways, building a PC is great to be able to run all the heavier games that you want to run. Even like Sims, I tried running Sims on like a somewhat more beefy, laptop a couple years ago and it just it just wasn't the same like I, so many people are like oh you got a pc just to play sims yes and because it runs perfectly smooth as butter yes 
and other games, but I'm not even gonna justify those to you because yes, Sims. <laughs> Anyways, that's my rant about PCs. There's also solid, solid gaming laptops. I know a lot of people kind of have mixed feelings about gaming laptops. They're like, just get a PC. Like for the same money, you could get a really good PC that runs like crazy. But I think that is kind of comparing apples to oranges because some people don't want a desktop. Some people either don't have the space or just simply don't want to sit down at a desktop to play their games. And I know a lot of us gamers couldn't possibly understand that. We're like, what do you mean you don't want to just sit down and at a desk all day and play games? Some people don't want to do that. And I get that because that's how I was for most of my life. So I just think you can't really compare the two. I think with a gaming laptop, you're paying a premium for it to be kind of a nicely designed laptop. It's hard to fit all that crap in <laughs> to a small laptop. So if you do want to get a gaming laptop, don't be discouraged by people like, it's not worth it. You might as well get a PC. If that's what you want and you know that's what you want, get a gaming laptop. I have an Alienware X14. I have it because I did a partnership with them. Just disclaimer, I did not purchase it myself, but I love it. That is kind of PC, computer, gaming as a whole. If I missed anything by it, I'll put it in the comments, but definitely I think PC gaming is another great start in addition or in place of getting a Switch. Kind of peripherally to PC gaming is the Steam Deck. So the Steam Deck just came out recently. This past year. And the Logitech G Cloud also just came out. They're both consoles, portable consoles that can run PC games. The Logitech Cloud runs certain Xbox games and Steam games, and the Steam Deck runs just Steam games. But the Steam Deck is also basically a mini PC and you can mod it however you want to be able to play whatever. Like I think you can get Xbox Game Pass on there and Epic games and anything on there. The Steam Deck is basically a portable PC. It's kind of the answer to the people that are like, mur, 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 don't get a gaming laptop. And people who don't want to sit down at a gaming desktop, Steam Deck or the Logitech G Cloud. I haven't heard anything about the Logitech G Cloud. I'll have to do my own research about that. If you just got a Switch and you're like, dang, there's so many PC games I'm seeing that I would love to play, consider one of these consoles. I have the Steam Deck. I love it because you can dock it as well, similar to the Switch. So I love docking downstairs, being able to sit on the couch with a controller, get cozy and play games that aren't available on Switch yet. Not every single steam game is like optimized for the steam deck yet so it'll tell you which games are like verified steam deck playable there's a lot there's a lot of games that have been verified and have been optimized the console portion is the longest i, I promise the others won't be as long the last console ish is mobile games mobile ios android i don't know much about android but i do know they have a lot of the mobile games that apple has when i got back into gaming in my adulthood, I was sleeping on mobile games. Like I was like, eh, mobile games, like Candy Crush. I just can't, those don't grab my attention. Not all of the mobile games are like that. And I was sleeping on the fact that there are some really, really good mobile games. Genshin Impact for one is on iOS. If you're like, I don't have a laptop, Kennedy. I don't have a console. I don't have anything. If you have a phone, you can try Cozy Gaming and you can see if you like it. Apple Arcade is another thing I absolutely slept on. So Apple Arcade is $4.99 a month. It's so good. It has so many games that are full games that are out on like Switch and PC and all of these other consoles. So if you play one game a month, that's more than worth it. Wildflowers, Alba's Wildlife Adventure, two that are full amazing games on other consoles that are also just available to you on Apple Arcade. Definitely, definitely. If you don't have any console, this is how you should enter into and test out gaming and cozy gaming and see if you like it. Okay, so that is kind of the general console overview. Next, I'm gonna talk about the kind of nitty gritty details of the consoles. So the first thing is game passes and online memberships. The two game passes I have are Xbox, Nintendo Online. The concept of this is that you're paying to be able to access the online features. You're able to access cloud saving. You're able to play any online portions like Animal Crossing when you wanna visit someone's island, anything that kind of connects to the internet. With some of them, like Xbox, for example, you 
get access to maybe like a free game a month or a library of games that are just free to you because you are subscribed to this. The online aspects of the game sometimes are necessary, especially like Animal Crossing, that was kind of necessary for a while. Any online like Fall Guys type games, you need the online membership. So that is just something to note is that you should look into the online passes, the online requirements, etc., etc., because sometimes you do have to pay a bit extra for certain features. You don't have to though. That's the thing is I appreciate the fact that you really don't have to. You can play tons of games without touching the online membership. So just a warning from me that that is an aspect of a lot of these consoles. The games themselves, as I mentioned, there's physical and there's digital. This is really just preference. It's personal preference. I only get physical games when it's a game I love. Just cause, just cause, I don't know. Other than that, I get everything on digital because I just, I don't know. I don't like having that, that many games sitting around. I don't like having to switch them out. I don't, I don't know. I don't like that. The only thing is space. The only thing is space. There's not a lot of space, which brings me to the next portion, which is accessories. These are kind of necessary accessories that you need for your console, for your switch. They're not, they're not really necessary, but they are fun. And it does add kind of a nice element to getting into gaming for the first time and making it your own. So the first accessory is SD cards. You need to Go the second you get your Switch, invest also, so when you're saving up for your Switch, make sure you, you know the SD card you want and how much it costs and save up a little extra for that too because you're gonna be real upset when you get your Switch and you download on these games and you don't have enough space for all of them. So I would go for the highest amount you possibly can afford. The one terabyte, solid, solid, solid one terabyte will do it every time. You can also swap out. So once you put in an SD card, there's a screen where it'll show you like which game you wanna put on which storage basically. So you can swap them out. You can always get more, but what Way easier to just go for the big one first and that should be enough and then you can archive game and just keep the games that you want to play actively on that SD card next are skins and there's skins for like everything there's skins for everything skins just allow you to customize something so that it feels like it's truly yours if there's a black controller and you're like this doesn't fit my aesthetic this does not fit my aesthetic by the way get a skin for it I have a skin for it I just haven't put it on yet especially with the switch light the colors can be quite bright. It's either really bright or it's gray. Really bright, gray. You know, for me, that kind of hurts my soul a little bit because of how neutral everything is in my home. So as soon as I could get a Switch skin, I did. General customizable things are great. Aside from skins, thumb grips. There's so many cute thumb grips. These ones I think are so cute. I also have these, they're little mushrooms. Next, I think a car charger is a great accessory to get. Long car trips, car charger, bring it. In addition, buy an extra charger for whatever your console is. I'm I'm assuming Switch because, you know, we're cozy gamers here. You'll like to have one at home. You'll like to have one plugged in, you know, next to your bed or if you have a regular Switch and it's docked. Oh my God, the most annoying thing is to take the charger out of the dock and then out of the wall, wherever you have it sitting. It's annoying to me at least, okay? It's really annoying and sometimes I just go, ah, whatever. I just won't bring a charger and then I bring it and then it dies and I'm upset. Get an extra one. Just do yourself a favor, lower the friction in your life and get an extra charger. Next is a controller holder. So this is for anyone. This is if you're Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. A controller holder is the best. There are so many cute ones. There's this Groot one from Urban Outfitters. Getting your controller kind of off of just sitting on your desk or sitting next to your bed or whatever. Making it look aesthetic, propping it up, keeping it nice and tidy, giving it a home. It's so nice. It's just Okay, here's some miscellaneous tips before I get into the games that I think are perfect for beginner cozy gamers. So the first is turning your notifications on for your eShop slash using DekuDeals.com. DekuDeals, that's D-E-K-U-D-E-A-L-Z-S <laughs> S for wishlisting games that you want and waiting until they go on sale because they always go on sale. Except I would say the except exception are Nintendo games. They tend to go on sale less and when they go on sale, it's minimal. So if you really want a Nintendo game, I would just kind of pull trig and go for it. For all the other games, 
because all of the indie games, all the all the other games, they tend to go on sale a lot. Use the eShop, whether that's the Nintendo eShop, whether it's the PlayStation, Xbox, whichever eShop, wish list the games that you want and keep your notifications on for when things go on sale. The reason I like decodeals.com, the Nintendo eShop is a little bit lack. It takes a while to like search for the game to come up, for you to heart it, then da da da. da. Decodeals is so quick, it is so user-friendly, you type in the game really quick. And one of the coolest features, I just think it's so cool, is you can look at the graph. They have a graph of like when that game went on sale and when it's a normal price. It just, it kind of gives you context. It allows you to know, should I get this game now? Should I wait? Like how long is it gonna be till this game goes on sale? I love it, saves you money. The next is just how to find games, how to find cozy games, how to find games that interest you. And that is kind of similarly, just browse the eShop, browse the current Current, the recent releases, curators that you like. Like I talked about, Wholesome Games is an amazing curator. Keeping on TikTok and kind of like keeping up with game development content will get you like front row seats to new games to be excited for. Kickstarter. Kickstarter has so many games in development to get excited for, to back, and when you back them, you tend to get like early access to them and cool little perks depending on your backer level. Kickstarter is a great place to look for games, but mainly just browse. Just browse the eShop on like a weekly basis. Whenever I do that, I'm surprised by something. And my last tip is to follow creators that have similar taste as you. Follow creators that give recommendations, follow creators that do gameplay either on Twitch, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube. Just follow as many creators as you can that you genuinely like and you tend to share the same interest in games. There's a ton of us out there that are doing all this to help you find the games that we think that you'll like because we love them. And lastly, to the actual gaming portion, if you have been gaming for a while or know about Cozy Games, they're gonna sound very familiar and you're gonna be like, well, duh, but these are truly the games. I'm hoping this is kind of reaching the very, very initial beginners that are like, I just don't know what to choose first. These are the games. First one, Animal Crossing. I am recommending Animal Crossing New Horizon. New Horizons is a perfect game for getting into gaming for the first time. I feel like it introduces you to everything you need to know in order to play any game whatsoever on the Switch. Like obviously the mechanics are gonna be different. Obviously, other games might be more complicated or complex, but this is like the perfect stepping stone because it teaches you kind of like the actual button mechanics. It teaches you kind of pacing and how games tend to like introduce you to things and then kind of let you loose. And then there's exploration. And then you kind of go on your own and you go, hmm, am I doing this right? And maybe you do some side research and say, how do I get these fruits? How do I get X, Y, Z? And, and it's just the perfect game with low stakes. There's not days racing by, there's not time limits, there's not things trying to kill you. It is very low stakes, so you're able to kind of like sit, stop, and like look things up if you need to, or just kind of explore and figure things out because if you make mistakes, there's not really mistakes in Animal Crossing, but if you make mistakes, no harm, no foul. Next is Disney Dream My Valley. I would say it's pretty on par. I think there are some aspects of it that it seems like you kind of need the knowledge of like typical farming sims or it almost kind of assumes you have the knowledge of a gamer already. So it wouldn't be the first game, but it's definitely amongst the first. For a lot of the same reasons, it's low stake. The days aren't racing by. There's no timeline. You can really make it what you want. You can go about quests however you want. You can make mistakes, not do quests. You can do quests. You can farm if you want. You can not farm. You can make money however you want. You can just fish all day if you want, or you can farm all day if you want, cook all day. There's just so much variety in the game. I also love that there's a map for one. It shows where the characters are. It shows you how to get to them. If you press on them, it, it gives you a line of how to get there. It's just very, very user-friendly, hard to get lost, hard to like not learn your way around the valley. It's pretty easy to learn your way around the valley within like one day. So many people playing it right now that it's really easy to put on a playthrough on YouTube, put on a streamer playing it. I stream it right now. <laughs> just play along while you watch them and maybe you can kind of learn some tips and tricks. Lastly, a short hike. I'm putting this on here because it's super short, but it is a beautiful story and it's very simple mechanics. Inherent to progressing in the game is kind of like 
the need to just explore and the need to just go out on your own. And I think having a game like that as one of your first games teaches you a lot about the importance of exploring in a game and the importance of talking to everyone you come across and the importance of doing little side quests and the importance of checking every nook and cranny and trying new things and trying things that you think might not work, but they do and that's how you get to the next point. A short hike is almost like a good introduction to a game with more breadth, like Breath of the Wild, for example, where there's a lot of that on a larger scale. There's a lot of like need for exploration and need to try things, even if you don't think it will work. And that's a little bit more of a heavy lift, something I wouldn't necessarily suggest for brand new, brand spanking new gamers, but it's a great game and you should definitely try it. And the story is so touching and amazing that I think it's a perfect game to show how much emotion and depth can be in games in general. Those are all of the games that I suggest for the brand new cozy gamer babies. If you have any other suggestions, definitely put them in the comments for all of the brand new gamers. And if you have any questions about anything I didn't cover about gaming, let me know, ask me in the comments. I will be very attentive to the comments in this video and making sure I address any comments. I know this was very like kind of technical and nitty gritty, but gaming is supposed to be fun. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for your journey of getting into gaming for the first time. It's allowing yourself moments of play, which is so rare as an adult. You just don't really have moments of like pure blissful play where there's not something serious, consequential tied to it. It's just lighthearted, fun, lighthearted play. And we have so little of that in life these days. But there's so many ways to incorporate it into your lifestyle that is healthy, that builds community. I've made friends through this community and I hope that you can get the same out of it. And I hope you now know that there is a space for you in the gaming world and that we're here, we're welcoming, we're accepting, we're inclusive and we love you. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely time gaming. Again, ask me any questions in the comments if you have any. I am on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitch. I'm on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. Find me in all those places. I love you. Stay cozy. Bye.